Today I just thought we'd take a look at this rigid brushless. It's a Gen 5. And this particular drill does nothing, not even the light. So definitely looks like a control board issue. Just thought it would be interesting on camera to take it apart and just see what we find today. It is going to be a Torx T10. None of them appear to have the security studs. So just a regular 10 will work. We'll take all these screws out around this side. We'll be right back. Looks like 11 screws removed. And the case pops off. So this is a lot different than the older gens that I've worked on that had the brush motor, the bore being in here, sometimes being long this way. But my first time touching one of these Gen 5s for sure. Just going to go ahead and take everything out of the housing. See how that locks in. I think that's similar to the older version just don't, don't want to drop that just take a little while to put it back together I've had to do it motor feels good it's got that the heavy rare magnet feel to the, the brushless motor there nothing obviously burnt on the board that is a tiny control board and it looks like we're going to have our power components actually in front of the motor like C-Face, I would say C-Face housing here. Interesting. At this point, the motor doesn't work anyway, so it's probably worth taking another little further peek if there's anything we can do with it or not. And look at there. I've got to say I hadn't seen anything quite like this yet. Do see some type of like water line, like maybe water came up to this point here. Look at those transistors around there. Should be six, yep, six of them. So this is going to be a three phase type winding. So now I just have the battery hooked up, just checking voltages, just, of course, one thing to keep in mind, I have like your, your end bells of your motor, your front and your rear end bell. Also, the bearings are actually not supported, so therefore this motor, the armature is just against the magnets, so you would not want this motor to try to rotate like this, which it definitely was not rotating. But still, just keep that in mind. I don't want to try to push the trigger or anything. But I do want to check my voltage across because if we notice our 18 or our 20 volt should be coming off the pack, coming straight to the board. We have a, um, it looks like a current feedback you know, R001 resistor here. I'm just going to make sure we get voltage all the way through that. So I definitely have my 20 volts to my board. If I stay on this 20 volts here, go around. See that resistor is good coming up. And it's actually hitting, my finger may be in the way there, but it is actually hitting, I'm assuming that's the MOSFET. So our power is getting there. It's going to be something on the control circuit. I don't, right off, I don't see any major uh, power component issues. And one reason I was leaning towards control voltage anyway is I was not even getting my LED light to come on. So I'm going to unplug this. We'll see our microcontroller on this side.
We see our ISP header here. So one thing I did not notice earlier, and it may not have been there, is that little spot on that microcontroller that looks like a hole has come out almost right there where the zero would be. So Texas Instrument, it's a uh, 91680, and that's actually not another zero. That's actually a spot that has come through, and it may have gotten worse. I'll look back at the video, but... It may have gotten worse the more I was troubleshooting it because it is definitely heating up. It's definitely still heating up. I don't see any smoke. So for me on this repair, I probably won't go any further since it got the microcontroller. But a very interesting look inside of this BLDC and how they have the integrated controller built on. Uh, very aggravating to work on. But before the video ends, I do want to desolder it and actually take the motor loose. Of course, now this is going to take a while to heat up. So I'm just going to sit here off camera and keep doing exactly what I'm doing right here. And just keep heating these windings up at this solder joint on the board until it loosens up enough to pry it off or just ease it off. I've already taken off the, the four T8 screws, the little black screws here. That was being held on. So back now I have um, loosened up the solder here and sucked it off on this board. At this point on the board, at this phase, I just got to do the same here and here and here. We'll be right back. to give you a better view of what was on the back side of the board. Of course, that's what was on the front of the motor. TTI. Get us again with their designs. And by the way, if you're used to three-phase motor or brushless motors, one thing I didn't see here until we unsoldered this is we have a U, a V, and there's our W. You can see that. See a little better there. There's our W. 
there's our V and our U is over here so there was our three phases and all I've done here is just twisted my wires together coming off of my windings and connected some TFE or high current um, high temperature wire here I'm going to put some heat shrink on and the reason I've done that is I felt like if I put my end bell back on even trying to put jumpers on this to run it it'll be real close to hitting and grounding out so I want to go ahead and insulate it and put some heat shrink on it we'll be right back Just as a side note here, I did make sure when I tightened these torques bolts back up that I did so evenly and made sure they came to a stop just to make sure that there is no bind on the bearing that's not cocked or skewed. If you can hear that magnet as it rotates everything smooth. UVW. VCC and ground. So many of y'all that have probably seen my ego videos and know I, I repaired a blower and I've used this same VLDC controller to run even the 56 volt stuff. And uh, this is the first time that I've ever had to use this to run just a regular 18 or 20 volt tool because they are also going brushless now. I just hadn't worked on many of them. So if I bring over my ground and my positive, I'm going to have my power supply on at 18 volts and full output at 5 amps. And I'm going to turn my potentiometer here. Clockwise. And look at there, smooth as silk. About 1 amp. About 2.5 amps. I definitely felt like nothing was wrong with the motor and it looks like that hunch was right. Got it back together with the board out. Not saying that we couldn't have repaired the board, but once it got down to the microcontroller or microprocessor, chances are it's got its own special program and uh, beyond my abilities there. But a TTI that also makes a lot of the Ryobi stuff, their 40 volt stuff's a lot like this too as far as, you know, the, um, the batteries, the boards are just, without schematics, they're kind of hard to work on kind of overcomplicated for a uh, for repair and I just don't like throwaway stuff so there's definitely a lot of value left in it and um the tool would have been good except for that controller not really worth the money to spend on the controller but been nice to be able to buy a few components and fix it ourselves but or have a separate speed control that been easy to buy and replace right like like the old version But if you like this video today, looking inside of this rigid brushless drill, the controller for it, as well as the brushless motor, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.